Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball video for you this evening. Someone was mentioning in our comments that they miss me saying that we're coming to you live from beautiful downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. So I'm going to have to start adding that back in the videos. But we've been working on this old 1978 Stern Stars pinball machine. And we've got her all pretty much ready to go, but we need to test it. So that's what we're going to use you for. You're going to help me test it. You'll be here in spirit, right? So we'll get the uh, tripod here in a minute. We'll actually play the thing, but I figured I'd show it off a little bit. This was Stern's third pinball machine. So if you know Stern's history, they bought out Chicago Coin, which was a, uh, a long-standing company in Chicago that had made a bunch of electromechanical games, not just pinball machines. They made a bunch of uh, arcade electromechanical games, too. Um, we've had some of those in the past. If you look at some of our older videos, and then they also, uh, Chicago Coin started making um, uh, electro, uh, pinball machines way back in the day, and eventually they sold to Stern, Mr. Stern, who created Stern Pinball. Now, this is also a Stern pinball machine. This was Stern's second pinball. Rawhide. Head them up, move them out. They're, they had another one, uh, I can't remember what their first one was called, but it was the two-player version of this. So this is one of Stern's very first pinball machines. But they had just bought Chicago Coin, so this is probably one that Chicago Coin was actually already developing, and Stern just put the name Stern on it. So this was their second game. Their third one was Disco. If you've ever seen that one, which was also an EM. And then they made the famous Pinball. Stern Pinball. It's the name of the game. It's the greatest name ever for a pinball machine. So when they made their pinball machine, they made an EM version like this. And then they also made a solid state version. You could buy either one. So pinball was their first, it was their last EM, and it was their first solid state game. So uh, all of this was happening very quick back then. So this Rawhide game came out in April of 1977, and this Stars game came out in March of 78. So this game is less than a year older than this EM pinball machine here. So Stern was a family-owned company, and they were kind of throwing it at the wall, man. Let's see what works. We got to get some money rolling in here, right? Um so this Rawhide, which we'll do videos on later, um, it's coming up, but we try to work on one game at a time, you know. <laughs> We're finishing up the stars, and then we got a couple other ones we got to work on, and then we'll get to this Rawhide eventually. And by the way, if you're, if you're worried about us running out of games to work on, that's not going to happen, people. we got tons of them. we got a bunch of them in storage. They're all kind of like this, though. They're, they're lesser-known games. None of them are super collectible or anything like that. But to me, they're just as fun. I know other people might not agree with that, but that's that's how I feel. I don't care what game it is, especially if I've never played it or I've never messed with it. I will gladly work on it, no problem. So this one came out in 1977. This was their second game. Uh, they made Disco after this, and then they made Pinball. So there's four titles, right? So Pinball, they also made the Solid State version of, which was their first Solid State. And then they made Stingray. And we've done some videos on Stingrays before, Stern Stingrays. That was their second solid state pinball machine. And then this was their third, Stars. So this came out in March of 1978 and it outsold Pinball and Stingray combined. So this one, uh, I think uh, I think Pinball sold uh, 2,000 copies EM or something like that, or maybe 3,000, 3,000 copies, something like that. And then Stingray sold 2,000 or, or something like that. And then Stars sold over 5,000. So Stars actually outsold both of their previous solid state games combined. So they probably felt like they really had something going on here whenever this came out. So we're going to play it and then you can tell me what you think. I love the color of it. Now originally that frame around the, uh, around the back glass was painted at like a dark blue like the body was. Uh, but we don't have the dark blue. So we just painted it black. And it gave it this, this nice uh, kind of picture frame look to it. Looks fantastic. This is not actually our machine. We're fixing this for a gentleman. 
If you did not see the videos of us repairing it, you might want to go back and check those out because this thing was destroyed whenever we got it in. Some guy had had it in his storage building for 20 years with the playfield glass broke on it. And the playfield glass is still broke on it, but I'm going to put one on it here in a little bit. Before we play it, I'll put a piece of glass in it. Uh, but the thing was in his storage building for years. He said like 20 years. And uh, it was pretty rough. And so we cleaned it up. Worked on the power supply a little bit, and then the MPU came back to life and actually started working on its own. It was still holding on. It was still holding on, waiting for somebody to come help it a little bit, get it out of that damn storage building, right? So the guy finally did. He brought it down here to us. We, we started working on it, cleaning it up, and this is what we ended up with. So it has its fair share of wear. So the coin door has some rust on it and things like that. Um, the cabinet is faded and... It looks dirty. I tried cleaning it. I couldn't get it any better. I, if you really went to town on it, you could probably clean it up. But, folks, we've spent a ton of time on this thing. Uh, we kind of quoted the guy a price, and then we, we went to town on it. And it was fairly expensive, but, uh, uh, you know, eventually you get to a point where you just can't really work on it anymore. you gotta got to call it done and slap it on the back. So that's what's going to happen. So we're going to send it out the door, but not until we play it, to test it. So that's what you're going to help us with today. So here is the side art. It has little rocket ships on it because it's called Stars. Right? This was designed by Steve Kirk. Who did a bunch of famous games. He's the same guy that did Meteor. So there's similarities and, you know... Really, I mean, you could say that Meteor and this, they both have kind of the same theme. It's just this generic space theme, but what's wrong with that? Space themes work great in pinball machines. So let's check out the back glass, shall we? So it's the old school cool ones where it's mirrored. So you can see the rest of our shop here in the background. They don't do that as much anymore. But I wish they would. I think on some of the games they do, some of the more collectible limited edition stuff and all of that, that that Stern and Jersey Jack and everybody does. Stars by Stern. First thing you notice is that it has this weird setup of the displays, right? So the first display is down here. That's the one. Two is here. Three up here. And then four is down there. Now, why did they do that? Just because they could, people. Why not? Gives it a different look kind of gives it kind of like a, it almost like gives it some movement, right? So instead of the traditional putting them in the corners, they went crazy with it. Good for them. Good for Steve Kirk for thinking outside of the box. Outside of the back box. Um, and then the whole thing is dominated by this rocket ship. So there is, you know, it's trails coming from here. And it goes around. <laughs> and then if you'll notice SK-1 that is Steve Kirk's first design so I think this is the first one he made or maybe this is the first one he made for Stern I don't know much about Mr. Kirk but I have read on the internet pinball database that he signed all of his back glasses and so this is SK-1 and Meteor was like SK-5 or something like that so there's an SK-2 and a 3 and a 4 out there somewhere and uh he did many, many machines eventually, but he only did one. That was SK-1. So really, you know, there's nothing specific going on with it. It's just, do you like the look of that? Well, sure. I mean, that screams 1978 to me. I don't know about you. Looks great. Got nice blues. I see three different colors of blues. Now, you know, back in the day, they silk screened these. So they had to pay for each color. So there's a light blue and then a kind of, uh, what would that be? <laughs> so that's baby blue. Eh, what is that? Maybe that's kind of like a, uh, mm, I don't know. What would you call that? And then you got this darker blue. So you got three different blues. You've got a yellow and an orange, you've got a red, 
you've got a black that needs to be silk screened on, the mirrored finish has to be silk screened on, and then you have this kind of purplish salmon looking color down here, and that's it. They got away with just that. So that's, that's, it looks like a lot's going on, but it's really just a few colors. Three, four, I guess the white is the ink too. Three blues, four black, five yellow, six orange, seven red, eight the mirror, nine white, ten the whatever that is. That's also around the uh, score windows. So it's ten colors. Very good looking game though. I'll show it again here in a minute with the lights out. Okay. Playfield. Now we put a new apron decal on it. The old one was just destroyed. There was no artwork left on it at all. But you can buy these decals. Big stickers that you just stick on it. And it looks pretty good. If you look close enough you'll find some flaws. And I didn't have a shooter lane decal. So I used one off of a kit a um, apron kit that I had for a Gottlob game. So <laughs> that's the wrong one, but most people wouldn't even know that if I didn't point it out. Why, why, why did I even bring that up? It had the lockdown bar, was bent all to hell, and the glass was broke. So I think what happened was somebody with the glass on it was trying to take this off, and they put a screwdriver down under here. <laughs> And pried the hell out of it. And this, the, the receiver was bent up. This was bent up. The glass was broke. So uh, we fixed it by giving it to Joey and having him just beat the hell out of the bottom of it with a hammer. And he straightened it back up. And now it's good again. If you ever want to take that off of a pinball machine, if you open the door, look, one of my lights isn't on. What the world? Making me look bad on my video. I said I was done. That's better. <laughs> if you open the door, there is a latch here. If you open that, you can take the lockdown bar off. So you don't need to pry it off with a screwdriver, people. Also, most games have either a free play option or you can set the replay at like 10,000. So you don't have to install a doorbell on it. But somebody did install a doorbell on it. And this, this gentleman's had it in his house for a long time. Like, he's owned it for a long time, and he has memories of getting it back in the day. So things like that, you know, he's going to remember when he was a kid pressing that doorbell. So I'm not going to take that off and screw up his memories, right? He wants the one with the doorbell on it, I'm sure. So we left it like that. <laughs> um, it had a broken plastic on the left there. We did replace that because it... He probably doesn't have any fond memories of a broken plastic. And then, of course, we re we cleaned up the play field. It has somewhere that you can still see. But all in all, it looks pretty good. Put new decals on the spinners. Put a new pop bumper cap on it. Clean, 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 clean. And the main thing that we did was there was a bunch of wear right here in the middle on this artwork, on this ladder. And so a significant portion of that has been repainted. So we did a whole video on it. So if you want to see that, go back on our channel and you can find where we spent all that time that night painting this thing. It took several hours, but I think it ended up looking pretty good. But it's got cool art. You've got this rocket ship here that says SE3. 78. So, SE3, Stern Electronics 3. That's probably what that means. This was their third electronic game. Um, but it wasn't their third, there wasn't Stern Electronics third game, it was just their third electronic game, so I don't know. Maybe it was their third one in 78 or something. I don't know, folks. I wasn't there. We're just trying to we're trying to figure it out now with the archaeological evidence, right? But I like the artwork. I think it looks good. There is Mr. Kirk's name and the copyright stars, copyright Stern Electronics. So if you think about it, at the time they were going for a they were going for very simple names. So 
while uh, Bally was doing a bunch of licensed stuff and things like that, Stern made a game called Pinball, and then they made a game called Stingray that had an underwater theme, and then they made a game called Stars, which was their space theme. <laughs> I like it. I like the way they were thinking. And it had the generic plastics up here at the top. But, cool art. Alright, so let's read the instructions, shall we? Instructions. White, green, orange, purple, yellow star targets, light stars, and increase the right spinner value. So all over the play field, there are these star targets. That one is considered the purple one. That's the yellow one. That's the orange one. That's the green one. That's the white one. And I guess that's it. And so, each time you hit one of those targets, it lights up one of these stars. Right? And then the spinner gives you 200 points depending on how many are lit up, up to 1,000. Lighting all five stars lights the rotating special on the star targets. So special when lit is next to every one of these star targets. And that rotates around and you know if you hit that you get whatever the special is which can be which can be usually set for you get a free game. Um, if there's a location where they were feeling extra stingy, they might make the special be 50,000 points or something like that, which could still get you a free game, depending on what you scored. Red drop targets down increase the left spinner value. So the red drop target is actually drawn on the play field. It's the middle one. Now those other ones are green, and on the play field they're blue, so I don't know, that might be messed up. I don't know, I might have to look into that. Red drop targets down, increase the left spinner value. Okay. Red drop targets light the 7,000 points when the adjacent green targets are down. 7,000 when lit if you knock down the first the two green ones first. Okay. Make either set of drop targets for a double bonus. Uh-huh. Make either set of drop targets for a triple bonus. How the hell does that work? <laughs> Make either set of drop targets for double bonus. Make either set of drop targets for triple bonus. Well, that can't be that can't be right. Or maybe maybe if you've got maybe you have to have the double bonus, and then that gets you up to the triple bonus. Make both sets of drop targets for wow. Oh, I forgot about wow. I forgot what the wow thing was. It says on here wow scores one extra ball. So wow was basically like another special, but instead of a special, it was a wow. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Make both sets of drop targets for the special. So maybe after the wow, it moves up to special. I don't know. Pop bumper scores a thousand points because it just has a star on it on a lot of the sterns. But boy, it looks good. They had different types of drop targets than the other companies. See how there's like a hole underneath the drop target? I always thought that was weird. So if you do get the wow, it scores one extra ball. If you get the special, it scores one replay. The maximum is one extra ball per ball in play. All right, so there's a typical bonus ladder, like on most games, and it has this weird kind of bounce back and forth thing, bonus ladder. Uh, and then you got the double and the triple. And remember up here, they also had the double and the triple if you get the the drop targets down. My focus is tripping. What's it tripping for? What's up with that? 
Uh, and then it, there's two rollovers that say 500 advance bonus when lit. So you get 500 points and you move the bonus up if you roll over one of these rollovers. Uh, of course, you got the spinner over here. You can hit the hell out of. You got the spinner up there. You got the pop bumper, and that's pretty much it. So it's all kind of you're going for the drop targets, and you're trying to light up as many of these stars as possible to qualify that spinner a little bit better. Um, the in lanes and out lanes say three thousand and three bonus steps when they are lit. And you can also, of course, if you get the extra ball, I guess the wow gives you the extra ball. And it looks like that's the only way to get an extra ball. That I see, at least. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's try it out. I'll set up the tripod. I'll put a piece of glass on it. We'll set up the tripod. And then we'll try it out and see if this thing... Uh, you see if we can put it through the, the motions. What a cool game. Now, on this particular one, because of the... Ref Reflection on the glass, you'll be able to see your score. Or kind of. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I'll call it out, though. Also, it's set on 5-ball. Usually, I set up on 3-ball. But uh, the uh, uh, it's a customer's game, you know, so I'm leaving it how they had it. Let me. So let's see what happens when you press the doorknob. I mean, the doorbell. So they have it set, I guess, to give you three credits. <laughs> Pretty cool. So this has Stern's old school chimes with like a wood block on them. We kind of messed with those a little bit on one of the earlier videos if you're interested in that. Go check it out. All right, so we're going to try it out and see, see how she plays. Shoot smooth. Strong flippers. So I'm trying to see if I'm just testing some of the targets and stuff now. Hmm. I think everything's pretty cool. Some of the uh, some of the uh, ones that only give you ten points. I don't know if I've got them adjusted quite right. Oh, there's a post in the middle that, according to the Internet t Pinball Database, is called a Kirk post. That one, the one that it just bounced off of. All right. <laughs> so my score was only 38,860. Yeah, there's a post right in the middle. So if you're if you're straining right down the middle, you can let it bounce right off of that. So I was uh, trying to see some of the stuff. I couldn't tell for sure if it was scoring. Like so, some of the uh, some of the dead rubbers, like this one and that one and that one. I don't know for sure that they were scoring like their ten points that they're supposed to give you, but we'll keep watching it. And then the pop bumper. I don't know if. Uh, I mean, it's popping, so it should have been scoring. There's a separate switch to, to, for it to... Well, no, that's on an EM. I don't know. We'll keep playing. Yeah, the pop bumper did not score. So it says, pop bumper scores 1,000. It did not. I've only got 510 points right now. 
Now I've got 530. So the pop bumper's not scoring. We gotta figure that out. Is it popping? Surely it's popping. It didn't pop that time though. What good is it if your pop bumper doesn't pop? It's not popping. That's the whole problem. You gotta get that pop bumper popping. It popped that time, but I don't think I got my... Yeah, I don't think we're getting our points. I got to, I got to adjust that a little bit. Well, that center post is pretty cool. It saves it for you a lot, <laughs> but not that time. Yeah, I think that pop bumper is going to add a lot to it. So that right one went tink. It's working good. All right, let me adjust the pop bumper. So there were two issues. One of the issues is uh, the switch was too far apart. So I adjusted the switch, cleaned the switch. Should have fixed the pop bumper. Um, the second issue is that the card is for a three a three ball game. So the the software is set up so that on a three ball game, the thump up bumper is only worth a hundred points. So it's not going to score a thousand points. Um, it's going to score a hundred points, which changes everything. And now you might say, well, why would they do that? It's because if it's a three ball game, it's harder to get um, enough points to get a replay because you only have three balls. So some of the machines would actually make this, the uh, scoring different depending on if you were set on three ball or five ball. A lot of the EMs actually do that. That's better. I'm seeing it thump now. Whoop. Right down the middle. Huh. I need more proof that it thumps. And then we're actually going to try to play it. We're still testing right now. Oh, and I adjusted the two switches on the left so that we should get a little more. Should get a little more 10 pointage out of these two as well. Well, well it's got to kind of get on that bumper bumper. What the? What the? Might have to adjust it yet a little tighter, but I think it's playable now. At least it's working, it's just not. All right, so let's actually play a game and try to get some points. What do you think about that? I'm not gonna actually try to uh, test anything. Let's. I was just playing so far. So far, I was just kidding. <laughs> so let's see what we can do. Mmm. Did you see that? It went right between the post and the flipper. What a killer. Come on now. Come on now. Give me some action here. Come on now. That damn, that damn center post. It's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Do we let it do we let it bounce off the center post or do we try to flip it? Whoa. Got to getting some good kicker action there. Oh man. Ugh, get out of him. Watch that watch that shot up the middle there, folks. That's cool when you have a, uh, when you have uh, kickers that will, uh, that will actually bounce it back up and get it to go up almost like the flippers.
Okay, so it did build the bonus up to 12,000, so you can go up over 10,000. So at that time I got 40,710. So we're advancing here, we're getting better. Mmm, got the bad bounce there. You can kind of tell if you're going to get the in lane or not on games that have it set up like this. We need to get like a double bonus. Oh, we're not going through that time though. It has it lit up up there for me though to try to grab it. Ooh, I, I raked a couple of them. That's pretty cool. Whoa. There we go. Got my double bonus. Ah. One, dun, dun, dun. I should have got... Oh, it wasn't lit. That's why. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're learning. The thing flows pretty good. Oh, man. It got going too fast for me. Mm. I can tell that this is an early... There's, there's a little bit of software stuff going on. That's my opinion. Now, I am not a software engineer. But there's a little bit of software stuff happening. Like, for instance, sometimes when you hit the pop bumper... You don't get your 100 points. Now, the way they handled that on an EM was there were two different switches. There was one switch to make the pop bumper pop, and then there was another switch that gave you the points, like on the relay or something. But on this one, since it's all electronic, it's all handled in software. So, like, if I hit that pop bumper, it tells the computer that I hit the pop bumper, and that's how the pop bumper is kicking back, like kicking the ball off of it. The computer is telling the solenoid to fire, and it's rolling off the, uh, you know, it's firing off the, the pop bumper. Well, every time it does that, the computer knows that I hit it, so it should be giving me 100 points. There's not two switches involved. There's only one switch under there. But it doesn't always do it, so there's some kind of something's going on there. Another thing, if you look, just a little minor stuff. So it says ball in play. It says five. Well, the game's over. It shouldn't still say that, really. You know, just little little stuff. You can tell that it was, they were just kind of getting their stuff together. So I'll bet there's some kind of software reason that that's not, you'll see it on the kickers too. Sometimes these will kick, they're computer controlled, so the computer knows that you hit it, but it doesn't give you the, the 100 point, or it doesn't, uh, maybe we're getting the 100 points, but it's not firing off the, uh, the 100 point coil for the chime. You don't hear a chime associated with it. So just, just little minor stuff. You can tell that it's... There's little software things. On the Williams games, the early Williams ones, they had some stuff like that, little buggy stuff. And the way that you uh, change the, the software settings was very complex with these little buttons and dip switches and stuff. And So that's an early one, folks. I'm going to blame the software. Mm. That, that was all hardware there. Oh, <laughs> dangerous. It's dangerous, people. There we go. Double. Double bonus. Oh, oh no. All right, well, I got my double bonus. That's good. Give me some points. Oh no, my spinner's stuck. Unspin. Mm. Hmm. 
<laughs> About got it. You would think you would think that that uh, pop bumper violently doing its thing would would knock the spinner out. What the world? Now it's stuck the other way. There must be something going on with that wire. It's not letting it spin. <laughs> All right, so I got 72,220. The thing is starting to come back together. So let me see if I can get it to spin a little better, though. Okay, so fix the spinner. And then there were a couple uh, stand-up switches up here that weren't as responsive as I wanted either. You see that crap? It fell all the way down the play field without hitting anything. Mmm, nice spinner. Boy, that spinner's smooth as silk now, though. That was nice. Oh, it jumped the flipper. Everybody always complains about that. It jumped the flipper. Oh, there's nothing I can do about that, people. Physics. Whoa, I saved it. Barely. <laughs> mm. No saving at that time. Okay. Seems to be a lot easier to get the stars than I thought it would be. I figured those targets would be hard to hit, but you actually it, you get all five of them pretty often. Okay, so we got forty-four thousand one hundred and ten. Oh, we ran out of credits. I have to hit the doorknob, the doorbell again. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. So I already got the white one. Mmm. Nothing you can do. If it doesn't bounce off that post, you they got you. Oh, come on now. Oh, look, I let it do it. I was trying to play with my food. Don't play with your food, people. Mm.
There's my double. Let's go for a triple. Ooh. Mmm. All right, 40,720, let's keep going. Damn it. Oh, something grabbed it. It hit a spot on the play field and fixed it. Mmm. It, 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 the 7,000 thing worked. Oh, damn. The 7,000 thing worked, so I t hit the two green ones, and then only the red one was up, and it lit up that it was worth 7,000, and I hit it, and it worked. That's pretty cool. I like that part of it. Mmm. It doesn't like it when I try to pass it. Bounce it from flipper to flipper. It doesn't like that. I'll tell you another thing that it does. Let me tell you another thing I've noticed. Mm. Um, pretty hard game. I saw some other people saying that too. But you know, I'm an optimist. I don't. I don't really like to complain about them. So I, you know, I still think it's fun. But one thing I've noticed: there are a couple little spots. If it falls from the bottom, you'll see it do it. Yeah, you might have to rewind the tape because I hopefully it won't ever do it to me again. But as it falls, it'll be falling towards your flipper and it'll hit the edge of this damn... It'll hit the edge of the kicker, which means it won't kick, but it bounces it just out of the way of the flipper. It's done it about three times. Because whenever you're, whenever you're coming on the play field, that's where you keep coming from. You know, it always drops down through the middle. So you're falling out of there each time. So if I'm shooting, I probably should be shooting for those drops every time. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It, about, it almost jumped the flipper again on me. Cool little pickup of that yellow star. Mm. That's a good game, uh, score-wise, this time. Ooh. Yeah, you gotta be careful trying to pass it by bouncing from one flipper to another. It doesn't... Uh, that doesn't work out all that great on this one. There we go. Well, I got them. I got them all down, but it happened at the same time. I didn't build it up yet. Okay, that makes sense. That makes the score card make make better sense. Um, there's my special when lit. Special when lit, baby. Come on now. Oh, man. All right, I got 110,810. Okay, so now that we've played it a little bit, I think the thing to do is we got to think about this. We got to be smart here. So when we shoot it, every freaking time it comes down through the middle. And the thing I don't I hate whenever people say, "Oh, it's a drain monster." It's not a drain monster. That I don't like that crap. But it does come down the middle a lot, right? So you've got it you've got this issue where it'll hit the, the the thing and bounce off or it'll come down just out of the freaking reach of the of the flipper and they have Steve Kirk designed it with this this post in it, which probably means that the flippers are a little bit farther apart than most games usually are. I don't know that for sure. Um, let me look at... Yeah. Yeah, so he's got the flippers a little bit farther apart than on most games because he's got that post there. Which, if it's right down the middle, that post will save it. But you get this issue where it's just barely to one side. If it hits the side of this post, it's not going to save it. 
you're not going to get a good bounce there. It's going to bounce, you know, with the trajectory, it's going to bounce out. So you got to hit pretty much dead on that thing for it to save it. Um, so my whole point is shots right down the middle are not a good idea, which means I shouldn't be shooting back up the middle because there's nothing to get except that pop bumper that gives you 100 points. But if I shoot through the spinners to the top, that's much better. And you've got all this action over here with the drop targets. So your best shot is towards these drop targets, which you can backhand with this one or shoot with this one. So I'm going to try focusing on the drops more um, and see if I can get a higher score. So I'm at 110,000 now. So shoot, I'm just, my whole point is shooting through the middle doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, get it! Uh. You gotta shoot from. You gotta shoot to the edges, and it's probably smartest to shoot the uh, the drop. You see what I'm saying? Look at that crap. Hey, it gave it back to me that time. Is it because I slapped it at just the right time? I'm still on ball two. <laughs> so you gotta come through the middle on the plunge. And then you get some action. So you're locked in the middle up there. So coming back down through the spinner. Through the spinner. Didn't hit it hard enough to get it all the way to the top through that spinner, but I was trying to hit the drops. Ooh! <laughs> I got the lucky bounce that time, but I didn't that time. Ugh. Kind of brutal game. Alright, let me get let me get my double action going on. I think the kickers are starting to play up a little better. Mm. See, I was trying to let it roll over to this one, but it's farther than some of them, so it, I, it didn't <laughs> it didn't get all the way. Don't do that on this game. It ain't a good idea. That pop bumper, it's got to hit it pretty good. To get a nice thump out of it. Mm. I was saved by the, the the bumper for the post for a second there. I got to get another decently scoring one before we call it quits for the evening. Okay, so I didn't get any points that time, so it gave me the ball back. So at least I put that in there. Yeah, I was, I was reading on uh, Internet Pinball Database, and they were all saying, oh, this game's hard as hell. Oh, I got saved by the, I got saved by the, uh, the apron that time. It bounced off the, whew, that time it didn't. All right, let's try one more game. I got to get a decent scoring one here before we hang it up. So my, my high score is 110,000. All right, so we're in the, we're stuck in the middle there. Now we're gonna go for the drops. Oh, I missed them. But that's all right. At least we got some points. Go through the spinner. That's good. We've already got two of the stars somehow. I'm trying to get my double. 
by knocking down three of the drop targets. Missing it. Oh, almost got it. Missed it, though. There we go. So we got double. Double our bonus, and we've, oh, we've got a lucky bounce. We're up to 12,000 on our bonus ladder. Got all the lights on. Look, all five of them already. Somehow I was able to hit all five star targets. So I need to go back to my drop targets and try to get it tripled. We're, our bonus is up to 19,000 already. Oh, okay. All right, so I got 66,000 on the first ball that time. So, kind of proves my point. It's hard, but it can be done, right? And I think the 8,000 ball needs to be messed with. All right, so let's go for our drops. Oh man, they took it from us immediately. Immediately. We'll need a little more help than that. Come on now. Nothing. Nothing. All the way down and all I got was that yellow star. This might be a nudger's game. Maybe you got to beat the hell out of it. Come on. Oh, come on now. There we go, got our double. Okay, got our triple. Nice little sweep of the drops there. Did you see it when that happened? All right, cool little game. Pretty tough, though, man. That's a pretty tough game, but, man, it looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's smooth. I mean, it plays pretty smooth. I think some of it, though, is just switches that still need cleaned and adjusted a little better because some of the uh, some of the, uh, uh, the 8,000 is lighting up again fine, so the bulb must be a little loose or something. Okay, so I think some of it is the switches still need to be adjusted and cleaned a little bit. It's a few of them on those uh, rebound bumpers. And uh, that pop bumper, I got it real tight, but I guess I need to clean it a little better or get it even tighter. Uh, it may just be that some of the stern ones do that. I haven't played a meteor in a long time. We, we've had several meteors uh, that have the same pops on them, so I don't know if they're like that. Maybe they're just uh, not super touchy. But you can roll up on that skirt, and it will not trigger the switch. So there, I might just have to get the switch super close, super tight, where it's almost touching. But whenever you do that... The flippers sometimes will make the pop bumper go off, just the vibration. So you gotta, you gotta tinker with them a little bit, folks. But it's getting there. Um, so I did end up getting 119,000 that time. So I did beat my uh, my score. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Yay me! But see how it says ball and play five? It, that's kind of weird, man. It's got a, it's got a few little software things. Maybe they did an update on the ROMs or something. No, we did, didn't we? I think we did. I did uh, burn new ROMs for it. So I don't know. But uh, it plays pretty good, and it's it's got a nice flow to it. And the guy, I don't think he was a uh, Pistol Pete Maravich on the pinball machine. He just wanted the thing to work again. So we got it up and running and looking good and playing and tinking and tanking. Tink, tank, tink, tank, tink, tank, tink, tank. Do -do 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 -do. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it all for you. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, here in beautiful downtown, historic downtown Rock Hill. Look how nice it looks outside. If you don't know about that, um, we have links to Amazon down below. If you click those, it takes you to Amazon. Anything you purchase while you're there, it gives us a tip for sending you there. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. We had a guy the other day that bought a snowblower. That's pretty cool. He bought a snowblower on our account, and then he left a message and let us know about it. Psh, what a stud. So we, we'd, like to, 
We'd like to thank everybody that's been doing that. And we know some of you can't, and that's fine, too. Hey, we know what it's like to be poor, all right? So uh, if you don't have any money, we're not asking for your money. You don't need to be buying anything on Amazon anyway. But I know some of you are addicted to Amazon, so think of us whenever you go there. And uh, also, if you haven't done it yet, check out My Brother Donnie. That's our brother channel of my brothers. So My Brother Donnie has a channel. And uh, he gets into all kinds of hijinks over there. Lately, we've been working on the old grocery store. So in this old little old town in South Carolina, we bought the old grocery store. It's a little tiny one, though. So don't think we're rich or anything. It's just a little tiny building we bought on Main Street that was kind of dilapidated. And we're fixing it up so somebody can rent it out. So I'm on most of the videos with him. Um, but if I'm not, he's uh, more entertaining than me anyway. So <laughs> go check it out. He's always getting into some trouble. And uh, once again, leave your comments and uh, give us a thumbs up an odd number of times. And we, <laughs> we will see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.